how y'all doing again? This is your host, the Whiteologist, Mr. Blow Your Minds, and welcome to Black Minds News Report. First of all, most want to say what's good to my fam, my subscribers, my day ones. What's good to y'all and everybody? Want to thank you each for kindly clicking on that video. Pass it by. You happen to pass by, clicked on through to the thumbnail or the title in itself. Welcome to the most hated show in the black corner of the internet and YouTube. Go down the aisle, we always got a grand open, happen to see something to make you feel some kind of way. Remember, tomorrow my show is the truth. Don't need no partner. Let's blow your minds. What's up with these one hit as well? You know, I got to do what I got to do. Try to get it out here as much as I can, right? Because you know they out here suppressing the hell out of me. So anyway, I just came across this here. It says voters in November, not courts, will decide the faith of temporary correct protective status for Miami Haitians and others. Let me say that again. Voters in November, not courts, will decide the fate of temporary protective status for Miami Haitians and others. Right? So they got people here who are under a classification called temporary protective status and they say, you know what? They challenging that, right? And they don't want to give you that. Now, you know me as being BADOS and those who have heard many of my videos, I have talked about times where I believe that there has been a hindrance used by those who come from other nations and that there has been a benefit for those who come from other places to garner opportunities and advantages that maybe the black American descendant of slaves could be getting. We don't hold that against you. Right. And, uh, but sometimes we see that there are certain people who do come that, uh, seem to have a disdain, speak ill or have a, just a non care attitude towards us. And so when we see situations like this, this is the time when you probably would want BADOS to be in your corner to help support you. And uh, we bring this information for those who might be in this and those who might know people of it because uh, this has been going on for a period of time, but they have got some delays in it. So let me go ahead and let me give you a little bit more information on this here, right? So that was the thumbnail that I gave you, right? And I was talking about temporary protective status on trial, right? And so they're talking about how a court decision is upholding the Trump administration termination of temporary protective status, right? The Trump administration, they were the ones who were going at it because really when you think about it, I don't see no white nations. All I'm seeing is nations of color or black folks, right? They said there's about 250,000 people. They say from Haiti. Well, they just said Haiti got 250,000 people, right? But they ain't just Haiti, though. They talking about El Salvador. They talking about Nicaragua. They talking about Sudan. Now, all those would be considered uh, maybe people of color, right? Now, El Salvador, depending on you know, Nicaragua, right? But Sudan and Haiti and so forth, right? And so what they're saying is they're talking about this specter of people and, you know, how they're going to be uprooted from their families and communities and sent back to you know, countries that are dealing with war, repression, natural disasters, right? And we as BADOS, we understand that, right? We understand that. So that's why we're looking at how sometimes when they're talking about reparations and that when they do polls, how come the immigrant statistics, now again, they could be lying about those statistics. We know they could be lying. But those statistics should be more far in the percentage of higher of support than saying, no, we don't think we should be paying. So when that kind of happens, this is what kind of like, you know, our ancestors in the spiritual world and the whole thing about 2020 and a lot of things that are karmic are coming back on people who've been against us. Now, I'm not saying that everybody, the 250,000 is that. I'm just saying that there has not been a full support about what black people in America, the descendants of we of the slaves of slavery, and we don't have the full support. And also there may be two sides, there might be a two side cut here, because also you have an election 
and then I'll talk about that a little bit more, right? So they talk about this is a you know a long legal battle, and this is just one step, and this will be the fate of a lot of those. And they said, according to this November third election, a lot of this stuff will be decided. And the point is, this is not going to be decided by a current administration or by the judges. Now, again, I think it's today, uh, it was the decision that was about a case that went back in time called the Ramos versus Wolf. And then that there was three judge panel. It was done in the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. And they had reversed a 2018 preliminary injunction from the federal district court in California. And the court had found that President Trump referenced to El Salvador, Haiti, and African countries. Remember when he said shithole countries, right? That became this term everybody uses now, uh, colloquial, right? But they use it to denigrate these places, right? And so what they have done is taken that term, right? And saying that it is because of him saying this, they call amicus, right? I Meaning you have a disdain, you feel bad, ill will to them and so forth, right? So they believe that that statement has influenced the people who making the decision about the TPS, which is, you know, the TPS stands for temporary protective status. So they believe that the president of the United States saying the things that he said has somehow influenced their decision about, you know, relinquishing this TPS. And so they did is they had a hearing before the Ninth Circuit panel and this request they're doing, they're trying to get it requested so whether they would have to be granted to be able to be seen or heard. And so they, regardless to whoever wins or loses, they feel like, let's say, for instance, if the victims who said that because of what had been stated are being affected by it, if they should win, the other side is going to appeal it. If they lose, they're going to appeal. So they know that this is most likely is going to end up going where? To the Supreme Court. And, you know, court proceedings don't end in a week, a day. So this can take perhaps a year or more. And so according to the article, it talked about that the government has already stipulated that it will not actually terminate the TPS until the appeal process is completed. So they're going to allow for that process to, you know, render its course. And at the end of that, now again, you're talking about administrative, and you know people behind the scenes are pulling levies and pulleys and buttons, that if the same administration that is in here now, and these are the ones that are, you know, facilitating this, you pretty much know what's going to end up happening. But in the case of those who are, let's say, Haitians, right, uh, according if they lose, right, uh, there's an independent protected and but a separate injunction issued by the, uh, the New York federal judge in the Saget versus Trump case, right? So something in this Saget versus Trump case allow that these Haitians have a different type of uh, standing, right, or status. As a matter of fact, when you think about that Saget versus Trump, this was a lawsuit that challenged that Trump administration decision to terminate the temporary protective status for the Haitians and how the administration announced that the TPS for Haitian nationals will re expire on July 22, 2019. Now, those who are Haitians that were failing that, that was, this was already over a year ago. But because they filed this case, right, it allowed them to go through the process here. And they believe that, you know, the lives of about 50,000 Haitians and about 27,000, which would be U.S. citizen children of Haitians. So you're talking about 77,000 people could be endangered, they say, their lives if they do not, you know, get this protective status and being sent back. And so in this suit, it alleges that the violation of the law, what they say, the Constitution by Trump administration officials seeking to operate, uh, what they say is to, that the president racial amicus, right? The amus, amus. I said amicus, I said that wrong. I'm sorry, y'all. Amus, not amicus, amus. 
the racial animus towards Haitians. Despite the mandatory statutory criteria and procedure required to elevate the TPS designation, right? So there's a designation, there's a requirement that if the Haitians feel, they should still be able to require to do it. That you cannot, and they're trying to say, based on him, using his amos, talking about we come from shitholes and that we do nothing but bring in, you know, they're using that as a defense, right? They're going to use that as a damn defense. Okay, so, you know, here we are, black Americans, the center slaves. Uh, that's why we don't understand why people who come from other lands, why you don't support us, because see, when you in these situations, who do you think going to advocate on behalf that can give some weight? You need some roots. You know what I'm saying? Kind of like you got a tree you holding on. You're holding on to some weak branches. But if you can get to the tree part that got some the roots are steady, you might got a better chance. So for those, we have seen people who come in from other places who you know, try to tell us we need to leave and what we fighting for, but y'all are fighting to get in here, right? So when these situations happen, don't you think that you need to, again, plant yourself next to the soil, find ways of advocacy? I understand that there's a possibility that you can't really advocate like that because it kind of taints your status or if you haven't, you know, got your full... Uh, status as an immigrant to become a citizen that you don't want your name out there and your face out there. But if you have the opportunity that somebody asks you, then you should at least say yes, if that's the minimum you could do. So that is out there. And the fact that they say that um, the real decision for this TPS recipients is November 3rd. Okay. And so the history is the fact that Trump has persistently kept his promise to dismantle this TPS and to send these recipients back to their home countries. And so they believe that the steadfastness will continue under a second Trump administration. So they said if Trump wins, we know we're going back, right? Um, for those 27,000 children who were born here, yeah, I'm pretty sure you could, like you see the little sister there, she crying. She knows nothing about the homeland from which her family come from. All she knows is this and the stories and the beliefs that she got in her head and that she has to be taken there. Is it fair? How, as being a black American descendant of slavery, I myself can't tell you what fair is in this country. I just know that what my people have done fighting for the whole time we've been here, I think that if people from around where they come from, if they fight like we fight, I think you would be in the same position that we are in. But when you run, there's something about not taking a stance at times, right? When you're running, just trying to just keep running, 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 then you get to a place where you can't run anymore. And then... You may have be faced with have to go back to a place that you've been running from. And then now you started from ground zero, which all the time that you done ran, you probably could have been doing something. But again, I understand strife, turmoil, chaos. I get all that. But don't think that we haven't done that here. Everything that you see now, which I believe the city or the country of gold was not country of gold until we put that work in and built it. So, you know, we understand. And so one thing that I noticed that I talked about in this article was the fact that they said that uh, Vice President Joe Biden, he had promised to protect the TPS holders. Wait a minute. Here again, we as BADOS can't get no promise. We ain't get nothing. We're trying to get somebody faking to be black because they're wearing Timberland boots, all this stuff. And here's a person who's running, but he ain't made no kind of promise to black Americans. But he's going to promise y'all. So he's saying, hey, 77,000 of y'all, or I ain't going to say all 77 because the 27,000 may not all be voters. We're going to say the 50,000 of the, the, the adults and the loved ones, all right, I'm going to protect you. You're going to vote for me? That's what he's saying. You're going to vote for me? It's 70,000 of you, right? So he's making a promise to get him something, but what really promise? He said he's going to protect you. Okay. But see, at least y'all getting something. Here's black America saying, what we get in exchange for our vote? See, y'all got a promise. We can't get no promise. Where I promise it? Hmm? 
So he's talking about the fact that it went in the article talking about being returned to an unsafe country. See, everybody got something for those who come from somewhere else. But those who are already here, y'all ain't got no nothing for them. And those who sometimes come here, you act the same that we in that position because we don't want nothing. Don't you see that sometimes that a lot of things that we should be getting, that they use certain people as buffers to keep us from getting? But maybe that never crossed your mind. Maybe it's not the conversation or that's mums the word. And so he, again, part of the promise is that he don't want to bring them back to unsafe countries. He want to he want to find a way to make a path for them to get citizenship for the long term of the TPS holders through immigration reform. See, you're getting reform. He promised to protect you. Look at where is BADOS in this country. Nobody got to give us nothing. And then y'all wonder why y'all do all this going around not to deal with us because we the big joker. We the big and the little joker in this pack and the ace of spade, the king, the queen. There ain't no cause that can beat this. So instead of dealing with that, you're trying to find a way. You're trying to play all your hearts, your diamonds, your clubs. You're not trying to go to that spade because once you go to that damn spade, it's over, ain't it? <laughs> anyway... So he's promising all these things, path to citizenship, immigration reform. Uh, he's going he gonna to make legislation that will require action by Congress. Now, wait a minute. Action by Congress. That, but still, Congress still got to be the one to vote. But see, these are, again, sweet tongue words. These are words of promises. But after you do what you do for him, if you could get him in, he's going to, he said, I'm promising it. But still, there's still a process just like this court process in order for you to get that, right? Ain't that something? But the point is, here's a person who's running for a Democrat party whose constituents are primarily a dominant of the black American, but yet you ain't got no promises, right? You ain't talking about nothing about legislation. You ain't talking about nothing to the path to nothing to get you nothing. But you did say is I'll give you a path as if you include somebody, hmm? right? So it's kind of crazy, right? Everybody saying we complaining, we bitching and moaning, but the fact that y'all ain't, ain't trying to give a motherfucker nothing. That's just the truth. And so, according to they're saying that the fact that these uh, recipients is the fact that their uh, contribution that they say 5,000 TPS holders in our state, when they're talking about in Florida, and they want to talk about the $1.7 billion to the GDP, Right? But that's just a small portion. How much do the GDP that we as black Americans contribute to it? And again, this is the country that we have built and our ancestors have built. I think, again, I have a video that I'm going to come out and put out that, uh, you know, we actually put, we, we coming right out of slavery. Well, let, me, let me tell you something right quick. Because I'm going to put this video, I got a video I'm going to put out for us too. Coming out of so-called men after the Civil War. Do you not know that they created a bank that we put $57 billion back at the time of, uh, during this time, hmm, in 18, between 1865 and 1874, we put 17, $57 million in the bank. They took our money and invested into this country and we got no return, but somebody in this country was got all that that we didn't put in there. So how anybody keep trying to say that black people are not patriotic to this country when we put more in this country than you're ever going to account or give us credit for? But everybody else can get some promises, but we can't get nothing. So that just show the trueness of who y'all are underneath, right? And so they talk about how uprooting families and forcibly returning them to a country suffering natural dis disasters and repressive government. Well, okay, we got repress repressive government on us too. But the problem is, ain't no way to send us because this is the country that we built. So how does, when they talk about seniority, you know, like you got a job and they talk about seniority, what does seniority even mean? Seniority don't mean nothing when they come here to us. Huh? We, we seem to be, because we could have the seniority position, you keep over, it's like keep passing you up over the job because they didn't want you in a position. So they just keep passing you up, passing you up, passing you up. Don't you think eventually them that person is going to have some kind of problem with you? That they qualify, then they put enough into the, uh, to the company, and you keep passing them up. 
and everybody know you passing them up. But now when they start talking, then it's like, oh, you guys are complaining. No, it's not. The fact of the matter is, y'all know what it is. But this is just a true testament of who you are as a person, right? And so they also talked about the fact that they talk about when you go back to the 2000 election, when you talk about when uh, George Bush versus Al Gore, and that remember how the difference in that presidential race was about 537 Florida votes. So they believe that the twofold of reason why the TPS and trying to get rid of it is for seeing this time of this election and getting them up out of here so that that wouldn't happen to him. It could be part of that. I'm not going to say strategically that's not part of it. But, there's, but then here's the other side of the Democrats who are offering you, and here we are, just got a 200 and, 201 year of what you say, the 1619. Y'all came with some Kente cloth, right? You gave us a person who won't say they black, but then they say they Indian, then they say they Caucasian. And all kind of stuff. <laughs> but we say, I keep them pretty looking good and all that, but no dough, huh? Pretty Tony in us, huh? Pretty Tony in us. And uh, so here it is. <laughs> they saying that uh, they think the allies of Trump knows this and they're working hard to suppress the votes of the people, especially those who were supporting immigration reform, right? And try to put an illegal immigration question on the 2020 census to determine immigration participation. So I guess in that they was putting that in the census. And so November 3rd, the polling places where they say several immigrant communities will have long, long lines because they all know the effect of this is going to take a place on a lot of them. So they're going to get out there and vote. So they believe that Trump is trying to use this to deter. But again, like I said, Black Americans have been the greatest philanthropists the world has ever seen. We have given people a place of refuge when we ourselves don't have a place of refuge. We have given you a place to lay, to build, to build families and everything. But when it comes down to when y'all need to be in support for us, now again, I'm not going to say that all the data and statistics shows true blue of what it is, but the way that they depict y'all, Y'all don't really support. Like you feel like if there is going to be an ADOS, a BADOS tax, a lot of people feel like they don't think they should be paying. But yet, according like this story, you built children here. You was able to run here. You're building a life and stuff with your family. Why are you not entitled? Why you don't believe you owe anything? You know? Uh, take this break. Be right back. Check us out, y'all. All right, I want to thank each and every one of you for clicking on the video. Go ahead, comment, subscribe, share, like, comment, say, hey, I think you're full of shit, Mr. Blow Your Minds. Do all what you got to do. Those who are subscribed or have subscribed, make sure that you go back and check and see if you have been unsubscribed and check to click that notification bell because YouTube is doing everything it can. Again, been in business since 2012. You can tell based on the few views I get because they are suppressing because I am the most hated show on the black corner of the internet and YouTube. So give me a comment. Tell me what you think. Again, uh, family is part of the diaspora. But we did living in a day and time that we had to look for, see the future of ours and feel like, hey, you know what? When I look at this, it's like, some of you, who, again, who were born first generation from your parents leaving, it wasn't your choice. It's just a, it's something that you was born into. But think about if you've been where you are and fought and build where you at and fight the good fight like we have done here, you could have a place for us to run to. But see, like we have to be the refuge for the world. And then there's a lot of people who look at that and think that they don't have no allegiance, loyalty, 
or nothing towards us. And then they talk and spin in the wind at us. Well, tell me what you think. Again, this is the most hated show in the black corner of the internet. Until the next show, y'all. You know what I'm going to say, don't y'all? You know what I'm going to say, right? Until the next show.